Despite the goal of the London Olympics to inspire a generation, fewer people are playing sport now than four years ago. The government wants to change that. The idea is to spread the current funding for sport more widely and make sure it reaches people who don't get involved at the moment. So what will that mean here in the East? This from our sports editor, Jonathan Park. For some, it's normal to venture out on a cold night to play sport. These hockey players at Kingscliff near Peterborough are playing rush hockey. A bigger ball, no goalkeepers, fewer rules and no pressure to play every week. Perfect for first time a mark. What made you come down? I saw it on Facebook and because I'm quite a tubby fella, I thought it would be a great way to start getting fit again. Everyone has their own targets, including the government, who want to get Britain more active, and you can see why. Only 9% of under fives meet the chief medical officer's guidelines for being active for three hours a day. Only 36% of people aged 16 or over take part in sport at least once a week. And physical inactivity costs the nation a whopping £7.4 billion every year. Simon Fairhall, a sports administrator, says sport needs to adapt. I think the key is working with groups. I think primar primarily those groups that aren't car currently involved in sport. So going to scout groups, going to um, old people's homes and basically taking sport to them and engaging them. We're very good at advertising sports opportunities in sports centres. Well, that's not going to get new people. We've got to take sport to where people are. Right now, Sport England is working on its response, but national governing bodies are likely to lose some funding, including Badminton England, based in Milton Keynes. But its chief executive is also concerned about the massive cuts to local authority budgets, who invest more money in sport than anyone else. The government's message is very, very clear. You know, we, we, they want to see more people active, they want to see the inactive become more active. And what we're starting to see um, is facilities closing down, we're start, starting to see facilities reducing their hours. Well, we can't have one policy that says we want to get more people active, then another policy that starts to show at local level particularly that facilities are either closing, closing or being reduced. And the t just the two are incompatible. Ready, good, well done. Best bear crawl. Of course, when you're little, it's all fun and games. But children from the age of five will now be targeted by the government. And this junior CrossFit class in Ipswich is proving popular. If you're not involved in a team sport, there isn't an awful lot else. Um, and what I like about CrossFit is that all children, regardless of their ability, can achieve. And I wanted that for my own children. Um, there was no one in Ipswich doing it at the time. Um, so I decided to do it myself. The big push is now on groups who don't tend to take part in sport. Disabled people are twice as likely to be inactive as non-disabled people. John Willis, who was born without fully formed limbs, says to change that, sport needs to be more inclusive. I suppose what we want is to all sports days around the country to actually embrace the concept of inclusive sports. But as long as we can get people to do sports together, older, younger, uh, disabled, not disabled, make it just norm to just do sport. The vision is for a fitter, healthier, happier nation. But will it be possible, given the huge pressure on local authority spending? Achieving more for less won't be easy. Jonathan Park, BBC Look East.